What is up, everybody? What is going on? My name, of course, is Anthony, and this is VR365. What is up? It is another Thursday. It is October 31st. It is 5.01 p.m., and yes, it is Halloween. No costume this time. No nothing. Not really tripping on Halloween. Halloween is a cool little holiday. It's especially cool when you go to parties, like legit Halloween parties can be some of the coolest parties ever. Um, and Halloween's really cool when you got little kids. It's really awkward when you've got teenagers that still want to go trick-or-treating and they think it's like funny and a joke. Like, yeah, I'm still going to go trick-or-treating. I'm 17 years old, but I'm still... And it's like, no, please don't do that for the love of God. Please don't go trick-or-treating. At Bottom line, if you're 13, you should not be trick-or-treating, okay? 12 is the cutoff point. If you're 12 years old, it's all good. If you're 13 years old, no. No. Maybe girls. Okay, maybe girls when they're 13, but if you're a dude, no. No, no, no. Um, and then after 13, no way. No way, Jose. In fact, I believe that there is actually a city somewhere in the United States. I saw this news story somewhere that there's a city that is actually outlawed trick-or-treating for anybody 14 and over. And I support that law. I absolutely support it 100%. Okay, so what is going on, folks? Right now, we are, uh, once again, like I said, it is Thursday. It is October 31st. It is 5.02 p.m. I believe this is episode 301 of the show. And would you believe... Would you believe we're looking at a shiz show on a weekly show? Yes, we're looking at a shiz show. Now, there's a couple of reasons for this. The first reason is I just got off the damn freeway like 15 minutes ago. I'm not even playing around here. I quickly got my lights set up, popped everything on, and got it running, and immediately got going. <clears throat> and so here we are. I've had no time to prep for this show and I wanted to do some different like I wanted to find some news stories I wanted to look I wanted to make like a list of the best steam sale deals and I wanted to do all kinds of little things in getting ready for this show none of it happened I was going to do some stuff at work I was going to try to check on steam sales while I was at work just wasn't able to do it so we're looking at a legitimate shiz show on a Thursday. I mean, dude, it's kind of crazy because it's like, bro, you've only got one show a week and you're telling me you cannot prepare for one show a week. Well, you know what I'll blame it on? I will blame it on the VR gaming industry in general because God damn it, has it been boring to a degree in the VR gaming world? There's been no news. Like, what is the news? Okay, we've got one major story today. There is a major story. In fact, why don't we go to the webinar and we can go ahead and get into this. Uh, so here we are. This is Upload VR, and this was the shocker of the day. Vader Immortal Episode 3 arriving on November 21st for the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Rift. So this is the big news story today. Now, I heard about this a little bit earlier today. And when I got home and I had like 10 minutes to prepare for this show, I tried to quickly find the trailer and download the trailer. Guess what? There's no trailer. Like, I, if there's a trailer, I don't know about it. So anybody in chat, is there a trailer for this? Because I don't think there's a trailer for this. At least I wasn't able to find it. Uh, I went to the Oculus, uh, official Oculus YouTube account. I went to ILM X Labs, their official YouTube account. I could not find a trailer for Vader Immortal, but that's okay. Uh, maybe the, tra uh, the trailer will be incoming 
in the next few days. I mean, dude, November 1st is tomorrow. Now, the real question here, do we really need Vader Immortal Episode 3 this quickly after getting the last one? I don't think we do. I don't think we need it this quick, personally speaking. Again, I've been... Um, let's see, how, how would I put it? Okay, let's go back over here. Let's go back to our standard scene real quick and let me grab a different trailer and talk about this for a second because I gotta tell you, I mean, um, I've been a bit hypercritical on Oculus and their marketing strategies and I honestly feel like they haven't done the greatest job of marketing in my personal opinion. Now, of course, I'm a critic you know, critics are not well-loved among people that do things. They're like, shut up, go do something, stop criticizing other people that do something. But I got to be honest, like, I really don't think their marketing is very good. And it's very surprising because you're talking about a behemoth of a corporation. Facebook is a ginormous publicly traded company with multiple billions, billions just pouring out of every orifice, okay? Facebook has money to burn, and then they've got extra money on top of that. Where's the marketing? Like, where is a great marketing director, Oculus? Because I don't believe this is great marketing. Because no one is clamoring for episode three, especially no one's clamoring for episode three, Vader Immortal episode three, like a week after they get Stormland. Like think, you got to think about things logically. Oculus, whoever's in charge of this, think about it. We're going to have Stormland on November 14th. Do you think one week later we really need episode three? We're still playing through Asgard's Wrath, which is going to be a major part of today's show. I'm definitely going to be talking about some Asgard's in a little bit here. But do we really need this right now? Now, there's other people that will say, well, no, Anthony, you don't get it. This never should have been episodic in the first damn place. They shouldn't have broke it up into these bite-sized chunks. It should have been one solid affair that continued from beginning to end. And they shouldn't have nickel and dimed us with breaking it up into these pieces in the first damn place. So yeah, give us Vader Immortal. In fact, you're late already. Give us episode three right now. Why do we have to wait till November 21st? My argument is, look, I don't know that there's a hell of a lot that is popping off in the month of December except for games that have been delayed and now they're finally ready. There's going to be some of those in December, but do we have anything really scheduled for December? Anything of any major, um, you know, big time games? I mean, we do have budget cuts too on, I believe, December 12th, but I don't think there's a lot of stuff that has been locked in in the month of December, I think maybe that would be a better better idea for Vader Immortal Episode 3. It's just, you know, timing. Timing is everything, right? The way you position things is everything. And a lot of people are like, Anthony, you complain about the weirdest things. You complain that they bring something out too early or they don't do this. Like, you complain about some very weird things, Anthony. I don't get why you complain about this and you complain about that. But you know what it is, man? It's, it's marketing. There's a strategy for marketing. Like, like there's there's um, an art to this. You know, some companies do it very, very well. Some companies time things very well and are very strategic. And then also the whole coming to Rift and Quest on the same day. I've, I've said many times I think that that's a mistake. But that train has left the building. I mean, that train left the building a long time ago. Okay, so anyway, let's go ahead and check on chat. Let's see what some folks are talking about. Let me get the qu first check over to chat really quick. Uh, person Person says, Sebastian at MRTV got his cyber shoes and he was very impressed. And Person Person is waiting for his cyber shoes. Chris Richardson says, hey, VR365, bro, the Tilt 5 Kickstarter has ended and it made $1.76 which, yeah, that is, that's very impressive. Now, what does this really say? 
I think what this says, no, actually, I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not going to get it. I, I have a theory for why the Tilt 5 Kickstarter did so very well, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, the VR Mang says, anyone play Synth Riders? Worth it? I'm actually, you know, I'm legitimately interested in Audio Trip. I'm legitimately interested in Audio Trip. There's so many of these games every other day. Beat Snazzer, Jazzer Tazzer, Razzer Pazzer. Audio Spin, Audio Dub, Audio Mix, Beat Mix, Beat Spin. I mean, this one of these are going to be a real name of a real VR game that's going to come out any day now. These games are coming out left and right. And I can't keep track of them. But you know what I will say is Autica, baller status. Beat Saber, very good. Dance Central VR, not too shabby. Need to get back to that. But Audio Trip does look kind of cool. But no, I don't know anything about Synth Riders. One thing I will say, the VR Mang, I have a slight complaint. I hardly ever get keys. Like co companies out there, send me your keys. Send, if you send me a key to your game, the chances of me mentioning your game and talking major S about it is actually quite good. And you know what they say? There's no such thing as bad press, right? So if I talk major smack about your game, it's a good thing. But people don't send me keys. And you know what? I don't want to get down on my knees and be begging and groveling for keys. That's not my mojo, bro. So I thought, like, I thought maybe VR Game Rankings, VR 365, I thought we got big enough where maybe we'd start to get some keys on a regular basis. Hasn't really happened, and it's quite disappointing, to say the least. Uh, let's see. Uh, person, person. Yeah, see, here's an example of what I was just talking about. They should have just made Vader Immortal one game. Yeah, there have been people that have complained about this. They think it's a bad idea, this episodic. I, I think the episodic theory is actually relatively okay, but I think they're like bunching them up too quickly. Like, you should have an episode come out, then everybody gets satiated with some Star Wars for a little while, and everybody's kind of into it, you know, give it some time to live. Like, dude, Vader Immortal Episode 2, it's barely had any time in the sun, and now Episode 3 is like breathing right. It, it seems counterproductive. It seems counterproductive because don't you want to allow Vader Immortal Episode 2 to have a long tail? Am I crazy here? Again, I'm sorry, I don't agree with the marketing. I do not agree with the marketing. Okay, uh, let's see. We're going to continue to... Yeah, person, person, instead of multiple short games, they should have made Vader Immortal one game. They could have done that. They could have done that. Uh, let's see. Um, person, 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 person in the news a lot on chat, or he's in our chat discussion a lot. He read somewhere the other day that Valve is the most profitable company per employee in the USA or something like that. Wouldn't shock me in the least. Wouldn't shock me. Christopher Drocken, if you compare 30 bucks of Vader Immortals 3 to 4 hours versus 40 bucks for the 50 plus hours of Asgard's Wrath, you know, do the math. Uh yeah, yeah, that is not a very good comparison. That's yeah, that maybe maybe that's exactly why they did this. Maybe that's why they did this. Maybe it's easier to sell a 45 minute thing for 10 bucks than it is to sell like a three hour experience for 30. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know that that's part of it. Jarillo says, yes, we need it all now, now. Give it to me, give it to me, baby. Okay, uh, Sponge Knock, good to see you still streaming. Yeah, so if you didn't get the announcement, folks, basically VR365 is alive and well. We're treading water. Basically, I'm in a gigantic ocean. There's no boat anywhere to be found. There's no land anywhere. Sharks are in the water, but they're a little bit further away, and I'm treading water. That's basically what VR365 is all about. How long can I tread water before I just drown or a shark gets me? Uh, that is the question. So Sponge Knock says, good to see us still streaming. Yeah, so we've kind of settled. I think Thursday is the move. 
So I think it's all about Thursday at 5 p.m. I think this is going to be a regular deal. I was originally saying maybe Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know. I'm going to play around with it. Now, you know what? This is the third Thursday in a row. Thursday seems to work okay. 5 p.m. Thursday, it's locked in. Done deal. The other thing I'll say is we are now doing... Uh, a Twitch episode on Sundays. This is something I just did a Twitch episode last Sunday. I'm going to do a Twitch episode this Sunday. I might have an interview with uh, with a guy this Sunday, but I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Don't know if it's still going to happen. Uh, but there might be an interview. If there isn't an interview, then it's just going to be kind of a Sunday fun day, just randomly whatever we get into. So that'll be happening. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, Greg's VR says, Breaking. Not everyone plays everything just because it's VR. Um, okay, I don't know what that was about. Uh, Gaming Science Teacher is checking in. Uh, Stuart Gregerson, wait, what the F? VR365 is back. I thought the show ended. That's weird. It's weird to me. Don't you people, like, aren't you already subscribed to VR365? We've already had a couple of shows since we almost called it quits. You know, I basically said, look, I'm taking the month of October off. And then I decided, you know what? I'm going to do one show a week. And I'm not going to wait until November 1st and start doing one show a week. So I started doing it already. And this is now the third one, I think. Um, tomorrow, of course, is November 1st. And I believe the Patreon is going to kick back into effect. So if you are a Patreon supporter, if you're not down with one show a week and then also one show on Twitch on Sunday. So really, it's two shows a week, really. Uh, so you're only missing five out of the seven shows. Not as bad as you thought it was. Um, let's go ahead and continue to check, check chat here. Uh, somebody was saying, Valve, maybe not as profitable as they used to be with all the RMAs. Yeah, from the controllers. Uh, person, person. Again, dude, person, person, do you just want to call in on Skype and be on the show? You're basically on the show, brah. Okay, he says, Valve, probably a little less profitable with all the RMAs. No, no, no. What I was going to say, as profitable as profitable as they are, you would think now they would say, okay, everybody out there, you bought a Valve Index. Here is, what do they call it? When It's like an amnesty program or whatever. You know when your city or your state or whatever says, hey, bring your guns. Bring all your guns to City Hall. We'll buy every gun. It doesn't have to be licensed. Bring your freaking submachine guns in. We'll give you a can of dog food or whatever the hell they do. It's an amnesty program, right? Valve needs to do that. Like they need to say, okay, everybody, uh, and, and do it in waves. Maybe do it in waves. Like they're sending out emails. Like you could be in first wave, second wave, fourth wave, something like that, right? And so you get an email and it would say, would you like to send your controller in? You, This is a free amnesty time to send your controller in and get the new and improved controller. I mean, I understand what they did originally. What they did was they didn't want a complete and utter disaster right at launch. So they tried to pretend that there was no, no problem. You know, there's nothing to see here. Move along, move along. That's basically what they tried to do. And I understand why they did it. And I'm okay with why they did it based on that. Um, but then at a certain point, they need to turn around and say, okay, well, now we're months after the launch. The launch has now been successful. Okay, now let's have our amnesty program for your broken controllers. Okay, so anyways, um, I threw on the screen right now a trailer for one of my favorite VR games. A VR game that I believe is in the top 50 best VR games, period. In the top 50, in my opinion. And guess what? The top 50 is getting stronger and stronger. It really is because it's slowly, slowly it's getting stronger. But it is getting stronger. Games are starting to jump into the top 50. That's starting to push some other games out of the top 50. But In Death, I believe, is still there. It is living there in the top 50. It has made a home for itself. And the reason why I'm bringing it up even more than usual 
is it is the daily deal. Let's go ahead and go over to the webinar. And here we are, we're on the Oculus Store. Now, the daily deal does not have as much power and value when a Steam sale is currently in existence, which is what is happening. So honestly, probably not a deal worth tripping on. And we, we will check out some Steam sale prices a little bit later in the show, but I'm going to have to do it basically off the fly without any preparation. Apologies for that. Um, but in death is our daily deal. You can see it's 15 bucks. The normal price is 30 bucks. I keep forgetting about that. We could have had a discussion about this because it's rare, but every once in a while you actually have a VR game that will actually raise prices. And In Death is one of those few games that has actually raised its price. You, you normally think $19.99 is the magical price point. It's been proven again and again and again, but In Death is going for those 30 bones. But right now on the daily deal, it is down to 15 bucks. You got six hours. Now it's very possible that the Steam price is exactly the same. And you've got much, I think you've got more than six hours, right? I don't know how many days a Steam sale is going on, but I believe you do have... Um, additional days. Super hot is also in the daily deal. It's called a double dipper. We got double dippage. Super hot VR daily deal. That is going for 15 bucks as well. Normal price is 25 and a little over six hours left in that. So I did want to mention those real quick um, just because why not? And I threw that in death trailer on and I knew somebody in somebody in chat was going to start yapping about it as soon as that trailer popped up. So I figured might as well jump into it. So I'm going to go back to chat really quick. Um, I'm going back to chat real quick. I just want to double check on some other things that people have said here. Greg's VR slash videos. So Greg's VR, he's doing a lot of videos. He's added that to his name. Like, he's not just Greg's VR anymore. He's bringing videos on a regular basis. Have you guys checked out Greg's VR YouTube channel? You really should check it out. He's more than just a sim racer fanatic. Um, now, Greg's VR says, Some don't give a rat's ass, which is one of my favorite phrases, by the way. Good job, Greg's. Some don't give a rat's ass about Stormland or Asgard's, but might love Star Wars. Okay, so you're going for alternative programming. For example, not everybody watches the Super Bowl. That's why you've got the Puppy Bowl or the Lingerie Bowl or whatever the hell they're doing. It's called alternative program or counter programming. You know, you, you give some other programming for the people that aren't Asgardians, Stormlandians. Well, no, I think... See, the problem here, though, is if you are a Star Wars guy, you're probably a Stormland guy, and you're probably as Guardian as well. So I kind of disagree with that. I don't know that this is the right kind of counter-programming, but yeah, I, I understand what you're saying there, but I don't know that I would put... Like, see, for me, counter-programming would be like Luna. Luna by Phenomena. That would be counter programming to like at like something more super like Zing the Land Beyond is kind of like counter programming. I don't know that Vader Immortal is counter programming, although it's very short, it's very bite sized, so it's a great palate cleanser. And we definitely need our palate cleansers, we certainly do. Um, okay, uh, looking at chat again, let's see. Um, yeah, person, person, again, God damn it. Person, person, are you just going to call in or what? He goes, though, that might be just a minor blip for a company that big. Talking about all, all the RMAs. Absolutely. Yeah, person, person. This is VR365 featuring person, person. Upload VR got their copy of Stormland for review. Really? Really? Did they? You have to ask for keys, says Mame fan. Uh, no, well, see, sometimes you'll get keys, like sometimes like, you know, VR Roundtable and also VR Game Rankings, VR 365, I would get sent keys randomly. Like, I thought I made it to the big time, brah. I thought I made it to the big time. I thought I didn't have to beg as much anymore. 
but I guess I still have to beg. But I hate doing the begging thing because these companies, they want to bend you over. And they want to be like, oh, we'll give you a code if you guarantee us this, this, and this. And I'm like, nah, nah, you give me a code. And if it speaks to me, either very negatively or very positively, or if it's a big enough game where I got to talk about it, I'll talk about it. If it's a tiny game, the only way I'm talking about it, if it really speaks to me in one of the extreme ways. Okay, uh, Nocturnal Wolf in chat. Wait, hold on. I had it. No, I lost it. Okay, Nocturnal Wolf. Got my quest last week. Liked Vader Immortal, then went, then went outside into a big play space and loved it was like walking around a hollow deck. That's interesting that you got that feel from Vader Immortal because isn't Vader Immortal, like I remember playing Vader Immortal on the quest and sometimes there would be this annoying message, like like your head, like if your head went through, like they did some kind of uh, ILM X Lab, was doing some kind of annoying message that would like pop up on the screen, like get back into your play area or whatever. And it's like, why am I getting this annoying message? So I'm kind of surprised that that was that kind of a room scale experience for you, Nocturnal Wolf. I would be looking more at something like an Apex Construct and possibly putting it into developer mode and possibly turning off your guardian completely, but having a spotter, having somebody watch you, and you could be in like a Walmart parking lot at midnight. It's perfectly safe. I've done it many times, you know, played Apex Construct in, in a gigantic football field at midnight with a couple of spotters. It works great. Definitely do it. Hussein X says, I was actually watching Anthony's Sunday Twitch episode on Monday when it all happened. It was paused at the one hour, 10 minute mark. What happened? I don't remember what happened. Um, okay, anyways, we continue to move along. Um, and VR Mania Q says, at VR365, I bought In Death thanks to you. It's brilliant. After that, I bought more games for your recommendation. Much thanks. Yeah, pretty much if I put a game in a top 50, it is guaranteed, folks. It is guaranteed. Oh, Steam has in death for 12 bucks. Steam has in death for 12 bucks. So you want to do that. Okay, so we pretty much have gone over chat. Now let's talk about how there's no news in the VR gaming world. Let's talk about that. So let's go back to Upload VR. And besides this Vader Immortal story, is there any other news of any significance? I say no. So we're going to go ahead and go back over here. Okay, Onward gets custom maps, revamped AI, and a free play weekend. So that's cool, but not major news of any stretch. Um, let's see. Halloween, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, da 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 da. Uh, new humble software bundle lets you learn VR and AR game dev. Uh, 10 scariest games. Oh, Siren! This is actually legit news, folks, because you know what? Hammerhead VR is an interesting developer. These are the guys, they're working on Abe, which is actually a game. There was an Abe experience that we all know and love. But there's supposed to be an Abe game that is scheduled for the fourth quarter. Now, the thing is, we're in the fourth quarter as we speak. And I'll tell you right now, probably 35% of the games that say they're fourth quarter are actually going to release in this fourth quarter. And the other 65% are going to be first, second, third quarter 2020. It happens all the time. And so Siren, not Siren, I'm sorry, Abe, which is coming from Hammerhead VR, probably looking at a 2020 release for that. In my opinion, I would be shocked if it actually made it out this calendar year. But it's scheduled right now as we speak. Hammerhead VR is also the developer of an interesting detective kind of a game called Stein. But I don't know if that game's been canceled. It may have been canceled because I haven't seen or heard anything about it in a lengthy period of time. But you know what? There is a brand new trailer for the PSVR version of Siren. Just came out earlier today. I grabbed it. Why don't we check that out real quick and throw a trailer on um, and check that out. So let's go ahead and bounce over here. I'm going to pump the volume on this in-death 
trailer and we're going to check out Siren for PSVR by Hammerhead VR. Okay, here we go. So pumping it up and let's grab some. Peggy 12. Mermaids, sir. They are incredibly alluring. All right, there we go. That is the brand new trailer for Siren by Hammerhead for PlayStation VR. It is available today, but maybe only in Europe because I'm looking at the PlayStation VR store and I'm not seeing it here in the USA. Let's go ahead and bounce over to the <clears throat> let's bounce over to the webinar. Okay, so checking out the webinar over here. And you know what? It's been kind of shaky on PlayStation VR. When's the last legit banger of a PlayStation VR game? Probably L.A. Noir. which uh, when did this one come out? That was September 24th. So it has been a minute. I mean, Cool Painter Deluxe. Cool Painter was already there on PSVR, but that's the deluxe version. You got something called Blind Spot, which I have a blind spot for Blind Spot. Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion HD Renovation. You know, I've always heard about this on PC VR. Never had a chance to try it. Bonfire, of course, is on PlayStation VR. And when this arrived at PlayStation VR, the price got chopped in half for all platforms. So you can now get Bonfire for five bucks pretty much everywhere. Wands is also on PlayStation VR. Warzone is on there. I heard it's really craptacular. Concrete Genie is out, but it's got very limited VR uh, segments in that. Carly and the Reaper Man, kind of a cool little jam. I remember playing Carly and the Reaper Man on PC VR. Um, and then, of course, you go all the way back to L.A. Noir, Groundhog Day, Witching Tower. Witching Tower actually is probably the last PlayStation VR game that I've really put legitimate time into. And you know why I did, guys? Do you know why I did? They sent me a key. Daily Magic Productions. I didn't pester them. I didn't bother them. They recognized the fact that I'm doing VR game rankings and VR 365, it's double dippage. They sent me one key for the price of two. How awesome is that? And what happened? I talked about Witching Tower. I gave them some love. So that's what can happen, developers. It can happen to you too as well. But you gotta send me a key. I'm not gonna come begging like a little biatch. I don't like doing that. It bothers me. Okay, so we're going to go back to Upload VR because, again, we're looking for news stories. I personally think it is one of the lightest times in news that I've seen. And Oh, you know, and also, wait, going back to this Siren trailer really quick. Is anybody else watching this trailer and thinking, holy shit, The Persistence 2, it's out, bro. Look, it's straight up The Persistence. Like, is this not The Persistence? Like, if you squint, you think it's the effing Persistence, which is one of the best games on PSVR. Everybody loves The Persistence. Oh, shit, Abe is in The Persistence 2. We've already got a sequel to The Persistence. How awesome. No, it is Siren. 
and it is on PlayStation VR, but it's only available in the UK PlayStation VR store as far as I know. What is up with the legs on these people? Very long legs, doesn't look quite right. But yeah, so that is Siren. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back over to the news because, again, I really don't think there's much going on in news, and I want to be see if somebody can prove me wrong here. I'm looking for news stories. <clears throat> so yeah, I did see this Siren thing. We did hear about Vader Immortal Episode 3, um, and that's pretty much it. That is, like, dude, since the last week, nada. I mean, there really isn't anything. Like, there's no news. Like, how whacked is that? How could we have no news? That seems so bizarro to me. Okay, let's go ahead and check Road to VR. I want to double check and make sure I'm not missing something. So, you know, Pistol Whip is in the news. A lot of people are playing the finalized versions of that. Did I get a key for that? No, didn't get a key. So you don't have my opinions on that, unfortunately. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's is coming soon to the Oculus Quest. Yeah, we knew about that for a while already. Um, and, you know, we do have a new teaser for Stormland. We do have a new teaser for Stormland. And that's pretty much it. So, yeah, no real news. Oh, wait, the Acer OHO 500. Oh, shit. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Breaking news. Okay, no, wait. This is the previous OHO, right? This is not the OHO that we want, ho. This is not the ho we're looking for. OHO. We're looking for the OHO. We're looking for the Stormtrooper version, the Snow Trooper, the White OHO. The next level OHO. This is the old one. This is the crappy one. But let's go ahead and read about it any goddamn way. Okay, so this happened yesterday. It said, uh, remember when Acer's OHO 500 launched last year? Yeah, we don't either. No, you know what? It did launch in like Singapore or some shit like that. Because I know on the Windows Mixed Reality subreddit, which is a happening place, let me tell you. One of the most happening subreddits known to man. Windows Mixed Reality. No, actually, it's kind of a lame subreddit. But on the Windows Mixed Reality subreddit, subreddit, somebody from like Singapore or Malaysia checked in and said, bro, I just got an OHO 500. They had pictures and everything. And I was like, dude, is it 2160 by 2160? Because I was thinking, you know, I thought this was the OHO that we're talking about, the real OHO. But no, it's not. It's, it's, it's not the OHO that we really want. So the OHO 500 is kind of much ado about nothing. It's not the Concept D one that we're interested in. So nothing to look at here, folks. Nothing to look at there. But yeah, it did finally arrive. So I guess good news for that. Um, but yeah, there's just there's no news of any variety. Uh, let's take a look at... Yeah, so, you know, Panther VR... It's fully funded. I did hear about that. So that's good news. I don't think this was a huge shocker that Panther VR was going to be fully funded. It's Kickstarter, but we can go ahead and check out its Kickstarter real quick. And yeah, 100% funded. Thank you so much. It is all gravy. I believe this game is on schedule for, I believe, April of 2020 is when this game is expected. April of 2020 has a little bit of a cartoonish kind of a vibe to it. There's a lot of YouTubers that have been playing this as well. Has Wolf Dog sent me code? No. No, I'm just I'm not going to do that about every game. I'm just playing. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. So yeah, they're funded. It is all gravy. That is beautiful. Okay, Thief Simulator. Oh, did we get a... Oh, we got a release date. Okay, this is prime time, y'all. This is prime time. Breaking news, folks. We're breaking this ahead of everyone. No, you did not see it on that website, Arthans VR. No, I'm going to break the news for you. And let's break the news live on VR365. The Thief Simulator release date is here. Yes! We're breaking news, guys. It happens. Okay, November 12th. So Thief Simulator is, or December, wait, wait, what's the date? Oh, they're doing this goddamn European thing. It looks like December 11th. No, that's a European thing. We're in America, goddammit. It's November 12th. Okay, so Thief Simulator, man, November 12th is a banger of a day. 
There's a lot of games coming out on November 12th. I don't know if that was the greatest idea, but I do like the trailer for this. I think it looks good. I think it looks snazzy. And only 15 buckarinos. Now, 15 buckarinos. Are you concerned, ladies and gentle bots? Are you concerned? I am, because you know what? You don't get great. I mean, why is this $15? Is it like an hour and 20 minutes? Like, why is this $15? Because graphically, I think it looks pretty good. I think the trip, like that car looks hella good. That sunlight, the way the sunlight is coming into that car, look at that. Like, that looks like Grand Theft Auto, fools. Y'all want your Grand Theft Auto? It's already here, bro. Well, at least on November 12th, it is. I mean, this game looks good, in my opinion. I think somebody, a YouTuber, might have played this. Maybe Nathy? Somebody played this re recently. Uh, Thief Simulator VR, but it does have a release date. It does have a price. 15 buccarinis. And, you know, we're excited for this one. I'm, I'm legitimately excited for this. Um, and so, and I believe there's a new trailer for it. And I think I might have grabbed the new trailer a while back. Uh, but let's go back over here to our standard setup really quick. And let me see, did I get this new Thief Simulator uh, trailer? So, breaking news. Breaking news, ladies and gentle bots. And no, maybe I don't have a new, I don't have a new trailer for it, but we do have the car interior. Yeah, so here's a trailer. Like, look at that car. I like the way the car looks. I like the color. I like the Honda. You know, it has that Honda feel. Um, you even have to roll down the window, old school styly. Straight Grand Theft Auto 5 graphics everywhere, you know. Pretty much Fallout 4 VR, high quality AAA. And it's only 15 bucks. Incredible. Just incredible VR. No, I think it looks pretty good. That is Thief Simulator. It is coming on uh, November 12th. So we've got... And dude, November 12th is 12 days away. It is 12 days away. Tomorrow is coming real quick. Tomorrow is November. And so there's a lot of games that are coming in November. It's going to be busy. It is going to be busy. Okay, so let's go ahead and why don't we talk about some Asgard's Wrath. Actually, wait, before I talk about Asgard's Wrath, why don't I go back to chat. Let's give chat one more round of love and see if there's anything new and exciting in chat. Um, and person, person, remember this is the person, person episode. Person, person is on that Adderall. He is on another level. Dude, person, person, did you just drink some coffee? What is going on here? Because he says, speaking of episodic games, where the hell is Gallery Episode 3? You and me too, buddy. You and me both. Like, where is Episode 3? Especially after Heart of the Ember Stone, which was a banger of a banger. Now, earlier in today's episode, one of the things I mentioned was... There are 50 great VR games. There's actually a hell of a lot more than that. But there's 50 really good VR games. And I was saying that In Death is in that 50. You know who else is in that 50? Heart of the Ember Stone. The Gallery, Episode 2, Heart of the Ember Stone is in that Magical 50. Now as... Call of the Star Seed in the Magical 50? No, it's not. It did not make the Magical 50. It's still a great game, but it's not in the Magical 50. But yeah, where is Episode 3 when you need it? They're giving us Pistol Whip on November 7th. Everybody's hyped on Pistol Whip. I'm hyped on Pistol Whip. Oh, by the way, you want to talk about an incredible uh, the thumbnail game at another level. <clears throat> I mean, let's talk about a thumbnail, folks. Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis absolutely killed it with his uh, with his latest thumbnail, uh, Virtual Reality Oasis. Can I spell? Um, and let's go over here. Oh yeah, wait. We'll go back back here. Um, so yeah, see this little thumbnail right there? I thought he did a great job. That is a great job with the Valve Index with the tie flipped over his shoulder. Great job, Mike. Fantastic job. Wonderful thumbnail. His thumbnail game is on another level. But you know who else is really good on the thumbnails? I got to talk about it. 
Cass and Cherry. Cass and Cherry. Banging hard on the thumbnails. The thumbnail game is strong. I like, like they've done some great thumbnails. That's a great thumbnail right there. That's my thumbnail. Ha ha ha. But no, they've done some really good thumbnails. I think they're going to the same studio and getting the same thumbnail treatment. Cause uh, yeah, they do, they do a really good job with their thumbnails. So much love to the thumbnail homies out there. All right. Um, <clears throat> Now, what was I doing? Uh, we were going to check out chat. So let me go back to chat. And where were we? Hold on a second, folks. Okay, so going back to chat. Um, yeah. Gus, let's give a like for our boy Anthony. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why don't you guys go ahead and like the video? Um, we kind of hit a bump in the road with the video. The hype just kind of fell out of it because I don't know what I'm doing. But yeah, why not go ahead and, you know, p pump a like up for us. That will really help. Absolutely. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm going to scroll down here. And person, person, not on Adderall, just a couple of beers. No, person, person is off the chain link fence. Nathy's video is better. Even though he didn't do the mixed reality video. Because there's person, person. We're going to continue to get person, per person's comments all show long. Christopher Davis says, Just played Heart of the Ember Zone. Thought it was amazing. Could not believe I missed it. And does everybody else agree with me though? Does everybody else agree with me that Heart of the Ember Stone, incredible 3D audio. Like some of the best 3D audio I've ever heard. R. Gambo says Cass and Cherry have high production value. I'm telling you, the thumbnail game is at a high level. Their thumbnail game is at a high level. Absolutely. Okay, so what we're going to do now is let's talk about Asgardians. Let's talk about some Asgard's Wrath. So I've been playing a lot of Asgard's Wrath. Although, well, you know... Uh, define a lot. So here's the deal. I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about some Asgard's Wrath here. I've got some positive things to say. I've got some not so positive things to say. And first of all, on the positive side, I am playing Asgard's Wrath every single day, pretty much. Now here's the downside. I'm only playing like, well, last night I played a 45 minute burst and then I played a 35 minute burst. And so if you add that up, that's a little bit under an hour and a half. And if you're playing an hour and a half of Asgard's every day, it's going to be a long, long, long time before you finally finish Asgard's because it is a meaty game. This is the kind of game where really, when you're going to do play sessions for Asgard's Wrath, you probably want to bang like three or four hours of the game in one single chunk and you're going to still have to do that many different times because sometimes you're going to be stuck here sometimes you're going to be stuck there and it's going to take you a while unless you're looking at unless you're going online you're looking at walkthroughs and playthroughs and you're getting tips and tricks everywhere you might be stuck in some certain places so i have been playing it every single day this is my number one jam for example when i'm done with this episode later this evening i'm going to jump into asgard's again and i'm going to play it some more you know this is what we do this is the thing that we do and so i'm having a lot of fun playing it and it is one of these games no question about it the farther you get in it the more you notice the overall brilliance of the game and the more you're like wow this game just has so much going on with it there's so many side quests there's so many little different aspects of this game and it's pretty amazing now on the negative side of the coin i probably just need to restart my computer but i've been having tremendous performance problems with Asgard's Wrath lately. Just really bad performance. Like, And I'm playing this in my CV1. Like, I, I got away from the Valve Index because I, was, I tried it for a little while on the Valve Index through Revive to try to enjoy better graphics and stuff like that, lo looking a little bit better in the Valve Index. But there is a glare factor, and the glare factor is definitely there. But I had major performance issues when I was doing it through Revive on the Valve Index. So I said, F it. I'm going back to the CV1 
performance improved by leaps and bounds. But for some reason, just over like the last four or five days, I've been getting really craptacular performance in Asgard's Wrath. And so I've been struggling and I don't know what it is. I, again, I probably just, I, I haven't rebooted my PC in maybe like a week and, and there might be some something running in the background, something screwing around with something, probably need to reboot the computer. It'll probably flow a little bit better, but I've been having some problems with that. Um, but in terms of like just loving the game, one thing I love about the game is I've always been one of these OCD guys that basically likes to collect everything. So you put me in like a Mario World game, I want every freaking coin. And I'm more focused like, you know, there's people that are like A to B gamers. They want to finish games. They go from a game from beginning to end. They're trying to finish a game. That's their focus. And so you put them in Mario World. They're trying to get to the next levels of Mario. Me? No, I don't do that. I want every coin. I want every little treat. I want every little hidden gem. And like back in the days of like Super Nintendo and stuff, I used to try to kill every single enemy on the level before I would leave the level. Like very OCD like that. And, and if you're an OCD gamer and you play Asgard's Wrath, first of all, it's kind of like catnip for an OCD gamer, but it's bad in that way as well. Because I tell you what, just today, in fact, I was at work today, okay? And on my breaks from work, I go for a little like speed walk. Like we get these different breaks, you know, we have two 15 minute breaks and then we have a couple of other breaks during the day. And I go for a quick little speed walk places. And I, you know, I go outside and I'm walking around doing a little speed walk and then, you know, back to work, right? And I'm walking along and I'm, I'm looking at bushes. I'm looking at like every bush. I'm like, oh, spicy herbs. You know, there's spicy herbs, sea berries. There's some sea berries, you know, spicy herbs, regular herbs. Like I'm looking at every bush and I'm imagining like a white circle with a white octagon. And I want to grab little things off bushes. And so what I'm doing in Asgard's is I'm grabbing boards, pieces of wood. I'm grabbing scrap metal. I'm, gra I'm grabbing freaking cut off ears. Like I've got 20 freaking bloody cut off ears. What do I need this many ears for? I've got like 25 pieces of scrap metal. I've got tons of spicy herbs. I've got regular herbs. I've got all kinds of flavors, you know, Pineapple Express. I've got freaking all kinds of stuff. It's just coming out of my ears, man. I feel like I can start my own thrift store in Asgard's Wrath. And so it's like this wonderful collect-a-thon. So I'm collecting stuff like crazy, but it fills up your inventory. Now, luckily, I found the key ingredient that you need to expand your pouch. So I've now expanded my pouch. And I'm bouncing around, you know, like here, you're going to the different categories. You're going to the different locations, like the fast travel, like you're moving from this spot to this spot, to this spot, to this spot. Now, one complaint I do have is the loading times, the waiting in between going to different places. And I'm wondering, is it as bad as Fallout? Like, you know, when you do the fast travel in Fallout or Skyrim, like I want to take a stopwatch and figure out, is it as bad? Because it seems pretty bad to me. Like, I, all I have is SSDs. I don't have a regular hard drive in this computer. It's all SSDs. That's all I got. So it is on an SSD, yet, yet there's freaking, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, because it's like, okay, <clears throat> so this one thing I've done, like, I need um, one of the, the missions where I'm stuck in Asgard's Wrath is um, you have to get like the sword and the heart and you're, you're getting like four different things for like a Viking burial. Okay, so there's a boat. There's a boat that you're going to send off to sea, but you got to get the four different things that go with it. And one of them is like this big mug, like an A&W root, root beer mug. And I don't, I didn't find it. I don't know where it is. I didn't get it. And so I got everything except that. And I'm like, oh man, where's this A&W root beer mug? I'm looking everywhere for it. And I'm looking everywhere on that level and I can't find it. I've explored every little nook and cranny of that level. 
And so then I'm going to my map and I'm going back to other levels and I'm going to this level and I'm going to that level. And so I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. And it can take a long time. Like when you're bouncing from this area to that area, you know, there's a whole process of getting into that area. And then also it's like when you die, like another irritating thing that bothers me. Okay, so let's say you're playing Asgard for like 50 minutes. You're in a big battle. You die. And you're like, okay, F it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit the game now and I'll, play, I'll maybe play it a little bit later today. But the problem is when you die, you've got to wait you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting for the game to finally reload back up again. And then you can go into the menu and then quit and exit the game to make sure that it saves your process, uh, your progress. Now, maybe I could just quit straight up and hopefully it saved my game already. And maybe I don't need to wait and wait and wait and wait. But it seems like there's a lot of waiting in this game. For certain things to happen, which is a bit bothersome. The the performance issues are a bit bothersome. Now, somebody just said uh, something about CPU or blah, blah, blah. Somebody said something about that or about my GPU drivers and all that. See, I don't do a lot of that stuff. I'm pretty shitty about doing a lot of that stuff. That's why I've always told you guys that as soon as there is an incredible PlayStation 5 with a very good headset... Bye bye PC VR. Bye bye. I'll see you later. But it's going to be a while. Yeah, I know I haven't done all the things I need to do. See, here's what I really need. What I really need is Steve Bishop <coughs> of VR Roundtable fame. <coughs> I need Steve to move down the block. I just need Steve to live like about five blocks down the street so that I can say, Steve, bro, come over here and dial up my PC properly. Like, do my GPU, do my SSDs, brah, defrag it, do whatever you have to do, man. Figure it out, get it pumping, super smooth, uh, super sampling, all that stuff, man. Um, but I don't have anybody like that. And so I don't really want to look into it. I don't want to study it. Gamertag VR says, GPU drivers updates are a most, a must, yeah. They are a must. And dude, Gamertag VR, you're a freaking console gamer just like me, brah. You're new to the game. You're new to the game as well. And you're talking about GPU drivers are a must. Yeah, I guess they are a must. I mean, I had some pretty recent drivers on it. Maybe I should check. I should figure that out. Okay, so, but yeah, I continue to play Asgard's Wrath. It's a great game, fantastic game. Look, it's got a lot of little issues that are irritants, but it's one of the best games we've seen in quite some time. Oh, you know what I really love about the game? So Philly G was saying that he, when he first got the axe, like when he finally got the axe, that's when this game was that's when he realized that this game was awesome and that is so true when you do get an when you do get the axe the axe where you can throw it and then you yank it back you throw it and you yank it back and then also you have your axe and it's on fire and you can click the trigger and then you throw it and it's a bomb and it explodes or you have those big like those big red gates and you throw your axe and it lodges into the gate and then you zip, zip it back and then psh, it shatters the gate. Like that feels very good. It feels very good. Just having that axe right there on your right hip is very nice to have that axe right there. Because I'm taking my axe, I'm flicking it, flicking it, flicking it, flicking it, you know, nonchalantly flicking it all over the place. Flick, flick. It comes right back. And just most of the battles that I'm in, I'm not really using swords hardly. I'm mostly just using my axe, but it does get tiring after a while. You're like, okay, throw my axe, throw my axe, throw my axe. Dodge over here, throw my axe, throw my axe. Main fan says, the axe is so old now. You got to get over it, man. The axe is old. But no, I'm still doing it. And so I got to this one spot now. You know how there's these like giant characters, like it's Sinbad or like some type of Greek mythology, basically, where you get these like giant gods and he's like towering over you and he's like talking to you, ha, 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 you know, looking at you as you're running around your little guy and you're looking up at a gigantic god. So I got to another level where there's this gigantic god 
And he's like talking all this mad smack and he's like just throwing shit all over the place. And I don't know what I got to do. I got to do something to get to where he is, but I don't know how to get over there. But so that's where I'm stuck right now. But I got to this other giant God. And the thing is, when you see those giant gods, like this isn't the first game in VR that we've ever seen giant characters, but we've never seen giant characters that are this well modeled, you know, that they look this good, they look clean, they look like they're occupying space. It really looks like a big giant thing. You really feel that sense of scale. And I can't help but imagine, just imagine when we can play something like Asgard's Wrath, but the graphics are just photo real. It's gonna be so ridiculous. VR is gonna be so powerful when we get to that photo real level because I'm seeing it already but we're not at the photo real level but it's really pretty awesome okay no spoilers well dude I'm not very far like I I still need a root beer mug like I am not very far at all I've got a long ways to go um and and oh you know the other thing I like too is you know how you see like these little elf characters or like, you know, when you go to, uh, you go to Aegir's Hall right here and you have the, the axe throwing thing with those like little gnome guys or whatever they are. Like they, when you get close to them and you look at them, it's like they're made out of wax or something, but it's like, it's like a breathing living cartoon. Like it looks like a cartoon world. A lot of these characters look very waxy, um, very uh, greasy. But but it's like a, a breathing cartoon. It's like you're in there in a breathing cartoon. So I love Asgard's Wrath. It's awesome. Definitely one of the best VR games I've ever played. No question about it. Does it have a lot of little nitpicks? Sure, it does. Um, but overall, pretty friggin' amazing. I just wish my performance was a little bit better, but I probably just need to refresh my PC and then it'll be all gravy. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and talk... Oh, uh, Who Say Next says, which game has Anthony put more time in? No Man's Sky or Asgard's Wrath? It's not even close, dude. It's not even close. Because here's the thing about No Man's Sky. <clears throat> I've been in No Man's Sky. I've walked in No Man's Sky I walked around enough and seen enough in No Man's Sky to know that that game, that I just, I, I can't play a game like that. Not right now. I just can't do it. If I had the ability to freeze time, I would love to play No Man's Sky and just get lost in the exploring of the world and all of that and become a Reckoner VR. If I could just pause time and do that, I would, but I can't. So I really have barely touched No Mansky. Apologies to John Shrewbrook because he actually got me that game. Um, I've played a lot more Asgard's Wrath. And Asgard's Wrath, honestly, I don't really have time for Asgard's either. But the good news is, from the Asgard standpoint, is nobody's sending me any codes. So I can't play any other games because nobody's sending me any codes, man. So I just keep going back to Asgard's. So I guess I do have time for Asgard's because no one will send me codes. All right, what were we going to do now? I thought maybe we could check out Steam and check out some Steam sales. Or we could also see what has released on Steam because it has been a busy release time. Holy shit, I'm looking at something right now on Steam that is going to shock you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got breaking news. Let's go to the webinar. Going to the webinar, and here is the shocker. So Dement is available, and I think this game looks pretty cool. This is a game I would like to check out, but holy moly, Riccatoli, were you prepared for this, ladies and gentlebots? 40 buccarinis. 40 buccarinis. So Dement, it says release date October 31st. Down here it says, oh, special promotion ends on November 7th. So Dement is out and available. Do I have a trailer for this? I need to look up a trailer for Dement. I don't think I have a trailer for it. Let me see if I can find a trailer for Dement. Because I do think this game looks pretty cool. There's a lot of games that have all of a sudden just popped onto the scenes. Parasitic, and I really like the way they spell parasitic too. That's a really cool way of, of spelling parasitic. 
Parasitic Entertainment is the developer. Uh, Parasitic Entertainment. Okay, they do have a trailer. It's from three months ago. Uh, let me go ahead and grab this trailer real quick and we can check it out. Um, hold on a second here, homies. Uh, I'm going to get this trailer in the mix because I didn't know this was available. So it is available today. Dement does look kind of cool. 40 bucks though. 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Kind of crazy. Um, okay, so we're going to try to download that trailer, but we'll check back on it in a second. Okay, going back here and we need to go. Whoops, what did we do? I accidentally clicked on the wrong thing. Where are we, folks? Here we are. Uh, now I got to go back. Okay, games, virtual reality. We're just trying to see what the latest releases are because there's a whole lot of games that have been popping out. Okay, so Synth Riders is out. Music killer, dude. Music killer. Oh my God. Sist Sinister Halloween. Liz Before the Plague. Journey for Elysium. Wouldn't you like to release today, folks? Wouldn't you like to release today? Like, this is not great timing. Again, not great timing. Like your journey for Elysium. Okay, so Mantis Games, Kronos Interactive. I know you're trying to like do the Halloween thing. You got a black and white game. So you want to do the Halloween thing, right? We all want to do the Halloween thing. And you do have a discount, you know, 15% off. So normally 20 buccarinis, you're going for 17 bucks, but you're in the middle of a steam sale, bro. You're in the middle of a steam sale. You're in the middle of as guardians. Freaking pistol whip is around the corner. Stormland is around the corner. This is a hard time. This is a hard time to be a brand new game, trying to live a dream. Okay, Pagan Peak is out as well. A whole bunch of these babies are out. We need somebody like Paradise Decay. We need somebody that plays every effing game. Okay, so Ryko's Fragments. This is a game that we talked about last week, I believe, on, on our last week's show. And I did really like this. That does look very pretty. I like it a lot. Um, but... Not very good news on this game. According to Zim Talk and a lot of other people that were talking about it on F Reality, does not seem like this is one that we should bother with. Rico's Fragments. Rico, Rico. Um, so that is out there. Thrill the Fight. Uh, that's been out forever and a day. Of course, it's on the Quest, and everybody is ranting and raving about it on the Oculus Quest. Yeah, so a lot of games have dropped on Steam, but I thought we could check out the deals. So let's go ahead and click on See All Specials, and straight up apologies, straight up apologies, guys, because I was going to go through this, I was going to spend at least a half an hour going through all the games that are on sale and trying to come up with a list of what I think are the best bangers for the money. And so The Forest is down to 12 bucks. Arizona Sunshine down to 15. That is one of the lower prices we've seen for Arizona in a little while. You don't typically get it quite that low. Uh, Dirt 2.0 is down to 24 bucks. Everspace 450. 450. See, these are the games that I like, folks. These are the games that I like. Now, see, when a game drops 85%, that's when you're like, okay, that's pretty damn good. Everspace for $450, not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. I mean, that that's where you just buy the game. Like You're like, you know what? I have no time to play Everspace right now, but that shit's $450. So I'm going to buy it. This is how we end up with Piles of Shame. We start collecting these games like baseball cards. It is a problem. Okay, we're continuing to look. I'm just trying to see if anything like really jumps out and slaps my face. Okay, the one thing I will say though, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is on sale for $7.50. Here's my question. And I expect you to die. This is a question for these two games. Okay, so I expect you to die is on sale for $12.50. And Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is on sale for $7.50. Okay, what is the over and under? Jarillo, if you're still in chat, this is a great question for you. What is the over and under on how many times... Keep Talking and I Expect You to Die have been on sale. Because I swear to God, 
It's over 50. These games have been on sale 50 different times. At least, at least 50 different times in their entire life. At least. It's like every other week, the, these games are perpetually on sale. This is like that freaking Oriental rug place that's down the street. They have a going out of business sale like every other week. I don't know how they get around it. They're going out of business every week. They have a going out of business sale all the time. Uh, look, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is a great game. I Expect You to Die is a great game. But everybody and their uncle's mama has to own these games by now. They've been on sale a billion times. Literally a billion times. I'm not even stretching the truth there. No, seriously, the over and under is probably like 55. I really believe it's 55 for how many times those games have been on sale. Okay, so we're going to continue to bang away. Now, of course, the best deal in the entire in the entire lot is always going to be uh, the combo, the Crow Team Bundle. This Crow Team Bundle, 92% off, $17. It's definitely the best deal of the bundle. But it all it's always been. It's always been the best deal. And so if you don't own all those freaking Crow Team games by now, what is wrong with you? Although, if you're just not a serious Sam guy, then buy Talos Principle for six bucks. I mean, that's been the homework assignment I don't know how many times. You know, Abduction, here's a game that I don't own. Yours truly does not own Abduction, and I'm, I'm tempted. $10.50, I know this game has had performance issues for the longest time. I know people have said a lot of things about performance, but like this one literally tempts me. Like I'm literally tempted for this at $10.50. I'm actually legitimately tempted. Uh, the Mage's Tale for nine bucks. Underrated, underrated guys, underrated. Thumper is six buckarinis, but most of us should already have that by now. But yeah, I'm looking at an in death for twelve dollars. It's a great deal. Seeking Dawn for nine bucks. Seeking Dawn is a good deal. You better have a strong GPU though. You better have a strong GPU. But Seeking Dawn for nine bucks, pretty freaking proper. Pretty freaking proper. Okay, let's continue to scroll on through. I just want to see like what jumps out at me, what shocks me, uh, what seems to be. A chair in a room for $10, kind of decent, but more from a standpoint that uh, they don't lower. Like, I don't know how, how many times a chair in the room has been below $10. Like, this is not a commonplace thing uh, for a chair in the room. Like, it doesn't go on sale that often. Uh, Solus Project is $10. Oregon Quarter has always been one of my faves. Like Oregon Quarter, you know, today is Halloween, by the way. And so if you want to get into like Halloween and scary and all of that, dude, Oregon Quarter, it's not so much of a horror game, but the thing about Oregon Quarter is it just feels so dreary. It just feels so depressing and so hopeless. I mean, Oregon Quarter is just hopelessness. It is hopelessness. You just feel like you're in the most, you feel like you're in hell. Like that is what hell should be, Oregon Quarter. And it's $12.50. I think that's a wonderful deal. A uh, dead effect too is seven fifty. I mean, this is why we have piles of shame. Like, how does how do brand new developers with brand new games, not brand new developers, but like somebody has a brand new game, like Journey to Elysium. You know, it's a brand new game, Manus Games. I'm sure they've worked hard on it. Cronus Interactive is publishing it. They got a lot of money uh, at risk here. They got a brand new game called Journey to Elysium, but but. If you're a regular Joe Schmo, you know, if you're a regular Joe Schmo, how are you going to buy Journey to Elysium when you can stock up on so many bangers? Like Winlands, $2. This has always been the homework assignment. Winlands for $2. Dreadhalls for $6.50. I've been playing the Quest version of it pretty good. Until You Fall also has a little bit of a discount for a new game. Skyworld, underrated. Skyworld, pretty good uh, real-time strategy game. Of course, VR and real-time strategy go together like butter and toast. Um, they've got a bundle with Winlands 1 and Winlands 2 for a little over $22. Bucks. Um, 
yeah, so I'm continuing to look because I just want to see like what really jumps out at me. What wants to slap my face? Okay, Batman Arkham VR, 10 bucks, pretty decent. Uh, Brookhaven for six bucks. You want to talk about Halloween? Brookhaven, baby, six bucks. I still think Brookhaven is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a wavy ass wave shooter. There's no getting around that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look at every game under the sun. We own all of these games a million times over, but we're going to continue to add more of them. We're collecting them like baseball cards. Okay, do you have this Tony Gwynn rookie card? Because this is transference. It's the Tony Gwynn rookie card. It's $10. If you don't own this, slap yourselves. Slap yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Zing is $10. Rackin' NX ten dollars i mean it's you know it's it's madness but this this is happens every time how like we've done this episode so many times i've done this so robinson the journey is five bucks dude see that's where see if i had time and i could sat down and i could sit down and i could look at all of these i'd be like robinson the journey five bucks that's an anomaly that is an anomaly that's where that does not compute Robinson the Journey should not be mixed. It should not have mixed reviews. There's nothing mixed about this game. That Higgs unit is one of the clearest looking things you'll ever see in your life floating above your head. That game is absolutely worth five buccarinis. It is not even a question. Like that is mandatory, mandatory. Oh, Westworld, Westworld went down a couple of dollars, everybody. Let's do a golf clap. A golf clap for what? By the way, I'm watching Westworld because I want to play the Westworld, but I'm watching season two and I've watched five episodes so far. Not really feeling it. Not really feeling season two of Westworld, but I'm working my way through it. I got five more episodes and then I can finally play some Westworld Awakening. And I figure by the time I finish it, by the time I finish watching all the episodes and I'm ready to go, it'll probably have a real sale, like an actual legitimate sale. Okay, Just In Time Incorporated is only five bucks, not too bad. Affected the Manor, four bucks. Um, Vertigo, the original Vertigo, a dollar fifty. We've got a number of decent games that are under four dollars. Blind is only six dollars and twenty four cents. Um, but man, it is difficult. It is difficult to look at all of these deals and try to figure out what's the most logical way to go. I mean, you could go purely off how much how much uh, the discount is, like 85%, 70%. You can go off of that. Garden of the Sea. Remember that game by Neat Corp? You can grab it for three bucks. Shadow Legend, baby. Remember when I said Shadow Legend was Game of the Year? Yeah, not looking so great as Game of the Year. Um, I mean, it's still one of the better games of this year. I still love Shadow Legend, but it doesn't look as good as I said it was. And yeah, it doesn't look as good as I said it was. Okay, so we've been covering a lot of this, but why don't we do this, folks? Why don't we go see what chat's talking about? Because chat is chatting it up. So let me go ahead and bounce over to chat and see what folks are talking about. Okay, um, let me scroll down here, <clears throat> get to where everybody is. Okay, um, Victor Del Mastro, Tony, where's your Halloween costume? Ah, damn it, I forgot it. My Halloween costume is a disgruntled YouTuber with no AdSense and doesn't get keys sent in the mail. Can you tell? Can you tell? Yeah, that's my costume. Hussein X says, I played a cardboard version of A Chair in a Room. Free game. My first taste into VR. It was super scary. Uh, person Person says, just remember to cancel your sub once you got your fill. Not sure what he's talking about, but remember, this is the Person Person episode. Gaming Science Teachers is not to be confused with A Chair in a Room Greenwater. Okay. Oh, Shurzad Khan City. If you're depressed play organ quarter. You'll feel better. Yeah, you'll realize that things can be way more depressing than you thought. No, you know, organ quarter though, it's not depression, it's hopelessness. Hopelessness and organ quarter go together perfectly. Um, 
Okay, and Torn is pretty good for 750. That is Jarillo checking in. Um, and Adrenaline L says you can definitely play Westworld without watching season two. Wouldn't spoil it. Really? Because somebody was telling me that there were spoilers. I got to see uh, season two before the spoilers. Uh, main fan says, wow, Shadow Legend was this year? Yep, it was earlier this year. Shurzad Khan City, Westworld worth 20 bucks? From what I've heard, yes. It is worth 20 bucks. Unfortunately, it isn't 20 bucks, though. It isn't 20 bucks. Rudel Zavedno. Rudel Zavedno, guys. Rudel Zavedno. Season one is great. Season two, not so much. Yeah, do you guys want to talk about Westworld for a second? Because the thing I would talk about Westworld, like the actual TV show, is like, it's a problem, man. I don't know where they're going to go with this Westworld thing. They've kind of screwed it up. Because you know what's going on in the Westworld TV show? Is like, so spoilers for Westworld season one, minor spoilers. Basically, all shit, all hell is broken loose. And all the uh, attractions are running amok. And so, like, all these different robots are, are having their own little stories. And they're walking around and they're doing things. But it's like, where do we go from here? Like, what are you going to do in Season 3? What are you going to do in Season 4? It's too early. They effed it up. They went to the, all the robots are running amok. They did that too quickly. They should have did that in season three or something. Now, where do you go from here? Like, how do you dial it back? Are we going to have like some of the robots walking around Times Square? You know, is it going to be kind of like um, Ex Machina 2? Ex Machina 2, the movie where she's like in Times Square. That would be sweet. I'd like to see that movie, by the way. I don't know if they're going to do that. But it's like, where do you go from here? It's kind of like Walking Dead. It's like they do the same thing every season. It's like the, the problem with The Walking Dead, it's the same thing over and over again. Oh, there's a band of humans. They look like they're the saviors. You know, you finally found the proper saviors. You get hooked up with them and you find out they're cannibals. It's the same thing every season. It happens over and over again. And now what are they going to do with Westworld? I, I don't see where they're going to go. I think they screwed it up. Big mistake. Big mistake. They should have stayed in Westworld. They 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 effed it up, man. They effed it up. I don't know what to say. All right. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Is there anything else we can go to? I think we pretty much covered everything. I didn't have anything else prepared. So we're pretty much going to call it. All right. I'm going to head back over here. And I'm going to grab my little outro. And so amazingly, even with really nothing to talk about, no actual legitimate VR news, because there really hasn't been any VR news. I, I don't know what I would have done if I was still doing a daily show. What would I be talking about? I would be like scraping the bottom of the barrel. Basically, every day would be like in today's version of As the World Turns and As Guardian's Wrath. Here's what happened in Asgard's Wrath. I mean, every day I'd have to have a little Asgard's Wrath report. I'd have to have a little Borderlands 2 VR report. Because what would I talk about? There's no news. Like, this is really one of the boring... Like, what's the biggest news in VR? Just in the last couple of weeks, there's like no news. The only news is Vader Immortal, Episode 3, and Oculus's terrible marketing. That, that's really the only news. All right. Well, anyway, guys, that's going to pretty much go ahead and wrap it up for this episode of VR365 Live. Remember to go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe to the Dying Channel so we can keep treading water. There's no side of land. There's no boats. And we're hoofing it. We are treading water. We're trying to survive, but we're not doing a very good job of it. But if you subscribe, do you know in this last month, like I was looking at the last 28 days, right? YouTube shows the last 28 days. I've got 35 new subscribers in the last 28 days. Yeah, 35 new subscribers in the last 28 days. You know what this means? In another 500 years, I'll hit 10,000 subs. Yeah! 
In another five years, I'll be at 10,000 subs. We're on schedule, man. I'm meeting all my deadlines. Everything is working out great, dude. 35 new subscribers. Alrighty. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much it, folks. Let's go ahead and bounce out of here. And I will see everybody on Sunday. So remember, we are going to have a Twitch episode this Sunday, 1130, 1130 a.m., Pacific time, but it's daylight savings, guys. It's daylight savings, so it's it's going to seem like 12.30. It's going to seem like 12.30 p.m., but it's 11.30 a.m. Sunday. We are having a Twitch episode. I might have a guest, and we might be talking about live maps and AR and VR, and I might be talking with this like business guy dude. And we might get his take on the whole VR, AR thing. Maybe. I don't know. So we might have a special guest Sunday on Twitch. If not, then it's just going to be a freestyle, brah. And I'll probably be talking about games I've played. I might finally get some keys for some of these games. I might try some of these new games out. Maybe I get a key to Journey for Elysium, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I get a Pistol Whip key or something. So maybe I'll have some stuff to try out between now and Sunday, and I will report on that. Rudel Zavendo, exponential growth. Yeah, I mean, if I can get 35 new subs every 28 days, I mean, I'm golden. I am golden. I will hit 10,000 subs by 2085. I will hit 10,000 subs by 2085. So everything's great. We're doing wonderful. All right, I'll see everybody on Sunday on Twitch, 11.30 p.m., 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, and watch out for daylight savings. See you guys then. Everybody have a good one. Take it easy. Later.